first. Hello. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, I wasn't surprised. The whole camp, we knew that she's a tough Mexican fighter who's going to come forward and throw, and throw a lot of punches. And we knew that, and we were prepared for that. And nothing surprised me. Um, I just went out and did my job. Amanda, congratulations. Thank you. Was it because maybe she liked power and defense, or was it well, it was pretty much the game plan. We wanted to still go toe to toe. I love to go toe to toe. Okay, the truth of the matter is, we got paid a lot of money, and we were supposed to perform. You know, it, it, this is what this fight was about. We fancied to fight uh, Puerto Rico versus Mexico. Um, those are wars. And sometimes when you're in the gym, you're training for something. And then when you come here, some people deviate. But we came here to war. So, you know, we wanted to go to war the whole entire 10 rounds. You know, we didn't want to, you know, coast and adjust. We know what she was coming to do. And that was the game plan. The game plan was to uh, earn the money that we got paid. Yeah, yeah. Oh, did, yeah you, we, did you hear my trainer saying it? Screaming yeah, one, in two. Corner? Yeah, we, we, we found a home for it, and I thought, you know what, well, let's have a little bit of fun. But, you know, then at the 10 round, we were like, you know, go back to the center, bite down on your mouthpiece, and, and perform. It seemed like, you know, when you have a yeah, no, I mean, uh, uh, Erica always leads with her head, so, you know, I had won, you know, I mean, actually I won the referee, but I told them, you know, look for that, because she always does that in all her fights, she leads with her head, but um, this time I think it kind of like backfired on her, and she was the recipient of the first cut in the fight, you know, but like I say, all in all, you know, uh, it was uh, for Puerto Rico to do something that Puerto Rico's Puerto Ricans never had on the Speed of Champion, and in the gym, we went through this every day. We were like, listen, we're going to go in there and we're going to be in shape to fight for the entire 20 minutes. And that's what I believe happened tonight. No, yo soy súper, súper contenta. Este es un sueño de para mi isla, para ustedes, para mis boricuas. Y I'm over the moon ahora mismo. I just can't wait to go back to the island y disfruta mi gente. Y soy contenta. <laughs> Sí, no, estamos, estamos contentos porque, como habíamos hablado anterior, esto era para darle a Puerto Rico lo que nunca han tenido y, y gracias a Dios la, la meta se dio, este, cumplimos con eso, ya Puerto Rico ha tenido de todo, de todo, tú sabes, so, ahora lo que hacemos es pelear para los fanáticos, de ahora para adelante ya lo que queríamos hacer lo cumplimos, ahora es lo que ustedes digan, lo que los fanáticos pidan, si ustedes quieren la pelea revancha con Katie Taylor, después con quien sea, de ahora para adelante es para ustedes. Ay, no sabe, pero I can't wait to go see. <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> that'd be nice. Amanda, the, when Erica got cut in the third round, did you sense a change in, in how she saw and the amount of blood at any point ever? No, I didn't. Her? No, I guess she figures that she had to. I don't know. Keep coming. So to me, it didn't didn't really matter. I didn't see a change in her. I mean, yeah, it wasn't nothing. I mean, tons of fighting. Uh, uh, but let me tell you something, uh, Michael. You, you know, it's funny. Um, because Cindy had mentioned it, and Cindy was like, "Listen, in fact, we took like a little time off, like backed up a little bit, because Cindy has said, "Listen, you know, it's it's before the fourth round, and she's cut. She says you don't want it to be." Stuck stop and go to the, you know, like a, a no contest before four. So she kind of like said, like, you know, pace a little bit so that, you know, we make it after the fourth and then you resume it, you know, and yeah, it was a great observation by Cindy because she was the one that told me, she was like, listen, she's got a cut, you know, if they stop it before the fourth round, it goes to a no contest. We work 
worked so hard for this. So it was kind of like, yeah, like, you know, like lay off just a little bit until we pass the fourth round and then we go back to doing what we're supposed to do. And then at what point do you start thinking about Ireland and start considering what that's going to look like? What, right now? Uh, we said Ireland? Yeah, like, at what point do you start I'm, so I'm enjoying this victory right now. <laughs> Leave me alone for a day or two and then we can talk about that. We, we, we knew we were going to Ireland. Yeah. You know, the plan, it was the plan. Um, you know, Katie Taylor was, was super respectful and honorable and she fought us here in New York. You know, we're Puerto Rican, but this is basically our home. And we promised, and one of the things that I had said was that the only way I take the Katie Taylor fight if it's in Ireland. You know, she deserves it. She She's an advocate for female boxing. And like I said, to us as a business, it's never personal. So we we have nothing but love and respect for her. And it doesn't matter where you put Amanda Serrano and Katie Taylor, they're going to give it their all. Wherever you put them, it doesn't matter. Seven division world champion. Whatever the fans want. I mean, we've accomplished everything that we had set out to do as a team, and now it's just to honor our fans and give them what they want. So if they want us to fight Butterbean, then we're going to call them up and fight them. I mean, you can say whatever you want to say. It doesn't sound good when we say it ourselves, you know, um, but I like to believe that Amanda's one of the three top women in the world. So, yeah, I'll take that, but never say that we're the best because there's other great women out there. We're Jordan, one of. Jordan, I want to piggyback a little bit on his question. It's more for you. Do you have it in the back of your mind? She's just in a tough, grueling fight. How long did she, she need to rest before you guys can start training for May 20th? Um, see, uh, Amanda's a workhorse, and people don't understand. When, when your body's used to doing something, it kind of, like, needs it. You know, it's like, you know, none of us wake up in the morning worried about them. We got to brush our teeth. You know what I'm saying? It's something that happens naturally for some, you know, and the thing is that when we're not in the gym, we kind of like miss it. So after I give her two or three days, we start looking at each other like, you know, let me just do a little something, you know, and Katie's the same way. Katie was in the gym. I understand she was in the gym that Monday after the fight with Amanda. And I'm more than sure that I'll give Amanda a couple of days off and she'll go to the gym and do something. You know, it's just a lifestyle for us. When you like to kind of ramp it up then. Well, we, we won't start training hard. Uh, I like to say maybe like the uh, second week of, of March. She's in great shape. She just went hard 10 rounds. So we're not going to lose that in the next two or three weeks. So by the second week of March, we'll start, you know, a uh, Katie Taylor fight camp. Amanda, um, can you just speak on the wave of emotion that came on you when you heard for the first time that you're undisputed? And just talk about uh, just being here in front of basically a hometown for the second time now and just how you responded and reacted to just your performance overall. Man, wasn't the crowd amazing? It was super cool. And that's why I love the Hulu Theater, you know? I mean, back at the big garden with the KTL fight, the fans were amazing. But here, the, it's so small and intimate. So I felt like I was celebrating with them. But throughout the whole camp, I just, I manifested, I, I, I thought of it, and I was so emotional because I, I'm such a proud Puerto Rican. And to give back that to my island really, really touched me and really, I, I do everything for, for my island, so that really, I had to be the happiest up there then when they announced my name. Amanda, Amanda. Not, Amanda. Try, not trying to like, you know, shut you out the door or anything like that, but you've accomplished literally everything compared to like men as well. And, like, so we should quit? <laughs> but what I'm saying is that, you know, if you beat Katie Taylor, then, you know, it's, it's kind of like, there's not really a lot left for you to do, pretty much. Like, you've done everything. Then would you kind of look at that moment and say, all right, I'm just going to retire on top and just leave the sport? Or you know, that, that, that's a hard question, man, because when you think about it, you know, Katie could have done that herself. Katie could have sat on the win and said, hey, listen, I just beat Amanda Serrano. Uh, let me just leave on top. But, you know, fighting, like I said, is internal and is a lifestyle and and. You know, it's hard to tell a fighter, like, to hang it up. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I still bump into former world champions that are way past their prime. And the first thing that comes out of their mouth is, I could still do this. I think I could beat that guy. I could beat the other guy. You know, it, it's it's something that's internal. You know, sometimes we as trainers and managers, we have to 
you know, pull the plug for them because fighters don't quit, man. Yes, but once I say I'm retired, I'm done. I'm not coming. <laughs> I'm not gonna retire for a while and come back. But, but yeah, no, I mean, definitely the rematch with Katie Taylor, and then we have the trilogy. Yeah, Amanda, Amanda, heading into tonight, obviously, there was a lot of talk about the Katie Taylor rematch. How it been so? Did it weigh on your mind at all, knowing that you had a, a job at hand first? That fight. No, I, like I said before, I, I wasn't thinking about Katie Taylor, um, this camp. I mean, we knew it was there, but I knew I had to go out and perform my, to my best abilities. If this, if I didn't look good today, my coach would have been like, we're not going to take the fight with Katie Taylor. Yeah, if I didn't it, win today, that you, you, you fight can't, not You can't overlook and, and get the type of money that we're commanding for a Katie Taylor rematch if you don't perform like this. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you have to fight and you have to look good you know you have to you know make people believe that you know you could pull it off on the rematch you know what i'm saying so you know we we knew that if we were successful tonight that that fight was looming but in camp we didn't want to talk about it we we in fact we told a lot of the people the personnel we don't want to be talk about it we told the interviewers listen i'm gonna get up and i'm gonna walk away if you talk, start talking to me about uh katie taylor because we have to give erica cruz respect she deserves it and obviously had we not given her the respect that she deserved tonight we would have been on the end of a, a different storyline Amanda, to have a fight like that tonight, to become undisputed champion after such an all-out war from a fan's perspective, I'm sure you enjoyed it, but also maybe not as much as us. Is that the perfect way for you to be crowned the undisputed queen? Uh, definitely. I wouldn't ask for it in any other way. A Mexican champion beating the champion and taking her belt home with me to become undisputed. It was a uh, beautiful story. As for a blood match, your expectations. Yes. Of course, we was expecting a nice war. I wasn't expecting to get my J so bloody, <laughs> but I mean, it'll wipe off. It's okay. <laughs> Amanda, 15, 15 months ago, you were in a situation. Why, because of the last fight, you were a lot of New York to be honest with you, I mean, yeah, as a, as a manager, uh, trainer, and and you know, I'm family to her. She's my uh, sister-in-law. You know, there's concern with that, but like I said, at the end of the day, you know, um, there's. Uh, you have to take risk, you know what I'm saying? You know, there, there's no way in the world you are gonna make it to the top and be great, you know, being comfortable and playing it safe, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not Katie Taylor's fault, you know what I'm saying? I mean, they're fighters, they're performing, if the judges decide they wanna reward her, it is what it is, but we're not gonna shy away from a good fight worried about the outcome, you know what I'm saying? We, we've been stopped fighting for outcomes, you know what I'm saying? We fight for pride, we fight to give our island, you know, something to, to talk about in both and right now like I said you know from after this fight the relief is that we don't have to fight for anything else we want other than to satisfy the fans. Thank, thank you, thank you. Sorry I lost that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you guys.